This one I think is new to you, but uh, I've been obsessed with Lauren Daigle for a while. <laughs> I can't help it. So you got you got to come on this journey with me. It starts really low, but it goes high, so that's why it's so low at the beginning. You are not hidden. It's never been a moment you were forgotten. You are not. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. Why? shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will send it.
encouraged by hearing that. I forgot, oh, hello, <laughs> I forgot to put the mic on, so I had to go back there and do that. Come here, come here, sound guy. <laughs> Everybody awake now? Okay, all right. I'm a little loud still, I think. Un poquito too loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we're in the Bible today. <laughs> I'm using the New King James because Matthew chapter 4. Okay, I think we got through the verse 11 last time, the temptations. Okay. Well, let's pray as we open God's word. Father in heaven, we come before you tonight, Lord, to study your word, to see what you have for us in it, to, to know the things that you want to say to us, that your spirit has to impart to us. And so, Lord, I just pray that you do that. That, Lord, this uh, word goes forth and doesn't return void, but accomplishes everything, Lord, that you've intended for it to do, Lord. And we just ask your blessing upon our time in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 12 in Matthew 4. It says, Now when Jesus heard that John, that is John the Baptist, had been uh, put in prison, he departed to Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region of sh the shadow of death, light has dawned. So... Matthew is always pulling these uh, prophecies out of the Old Testament to 
let us know that this is this is the Messiah, this is Jesus, and this is the prophecy. And he went down to the, the Galilee, dwelt in Capernaum. Now uh, John was put in prison. There was there's an uh, interim amount of time between uh, the temptations in the wilderness and and this time where Jesus actually travels from where John was uh, to Galilee, and then he heard that uh, John was in prison. Okay, so going by the the land of Naphtali by way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, that's the area, of course, of uh, the uh, Lake Gennesaret, they call it, or the Sea of Galilee. And uh, Capernaum is on the northern most, most uh, point of that lake. And... Um, it is in the land of Naphtali in Zebulun, being in the area of the Golan Heights all the way to the eastern side, or the western side of the Sea of Galilee. And so it was Galilee of the Gentiles, and that really was, uh, although it was uh, part of the tribes of Israel that were allotted there, it was, of course, uh, then the Assyrians uh, took the northern ten tribes into captivity and displaced them and brought in other people and who were later known as Samaritans. And then, of course, the Greeks came in with the uh, Seleucids and everything. And so it became very uh, Gentile in that area. And uh, it had the Grecian influence um, the, and uh, the Gentile influence. Tiberius was built there on the sea. And then it had Caesarea on the, uh, by the seacoast. And... And so, and it was uh, a lot of Gentile um, influence there, a lot of pagan influence. And so, that's when he says Galilee of the Gentiles, he's not kidding. That's exactly what happened to the area. And that's where Jesus goes for his ministry. Now, he went to Nazareth first. We can look back in in Luke and all and, and see that he first went to Nazareth in quoted in the synagogue the scriptures uh, concerning himself from Isaiah and saying that this day the scripture is filled in your hearing and got them all upset. And so they tried to stone him in his hometown of Nazareth. And so he left, went down to uh, Capernaum. And that's where he basically uh, based his ministry when he wasn't traveling. Uh, Capernaum is ruins now, but they're, they're well preserved there. You can visit them and see the what they think is the house of Peter. Only thing the problem is they built like this flying saucer thing over the house. The Catholic Church has to build something over every religious site. You can't just let the site alone, you know. So they got this meeting room or something that is spread out over what they think is was Peter's house. It's like looks like a flying saucer. So <laughs> and so that's where Jesus has gone now. And Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so his message was John the Baptist's message of repentance and going further to that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That means Messiah is coming, actually. Messiah is right there. And now walking by the Sea of Galilee in verse 18, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and followed him. Now it's interesting. This is actually the second uh, call to Peter, at least, and the other disciples. They had already uh, met Jesus when at the baptism of John in uh, John uh, chapter one, verse thirty-seven through forty-two. Uh, if you want to turn there, we'll just go there. Give you something to do. If you have an electronic Bible, you can just point and click. Verse 37 of chapter 1. It says, 
Actually, I want to go back to 35. And then again, the next day, John, that's John the Baptist, stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away, or is just below, the, behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and seeing them following him, he said, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say translated teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. And now it was about the 10th hour. And one of them who heard John speak, that is John the Baptist, and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first found his brother, Simon, and told him, we found the Messiah, which is translated Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated as stone. So, here we have, at the baptism of John, we have Jesus walking. John pointing to Jesus, saying, This is the Lamb of God. And Andrew, Peter's brother, uh, was one of the two disciples that heard, overheard him and followed him. The other one, we're assuming, is John, the disciple. And so we have these guys there at the baptism of John. Now, chances are Peter was baptized by John the Baptist. I mean, they're all there. Why were they there? They're there. To, it said all the region came out to be baptized there by John the Baptist. And so um, Jesus, is, this is not their first time back in Matthew that they've met Jesus. But now Jesus, in, Jesus, you know, told Peter that, or told uh, Simon at that point, you will be called Cephas. You'll be called Peter, which is the Greek for Cephas, which means stoner or small rock. And so, this is the time that they met Jesus. They were baptized. They were could be they were believing in Jesus at that time, but they go back to the Galilee, back to their work, back to their fishing enterprise, and they're there, and then Jesus meets them there. And walking by, he, he saw them, and, and he, they were, Andrew, Simon and Peter, Simon, Peter and Andrew were casting a net into the sea. John and uh, his brother James were mending nets with their father in the boat. So two different activities going wrong with the fishing enterprise. And he just stopped and said to Peter and Andrew, follow me and I will make you fishers. Man, it says now they immediately left their nets and followed him. And I believe they did, but they didn't leave their nets for good at that time. Because there's another call. Jesus has for them. So they met Jesus at the baptism of John, probably baptized there by John, followed Jesus, at least two of the disciples there, uh, to where Jesus was staying, just followed him from that time. And Peter was introduced directly to Jesus as the Messiah there at, in, in the, that area of Perea or Bethabara. And uh, then now at Capernaum, where they're fishing, Jesus meets them and calls them and says, follow me. And, you know, they're fishermen. He says, I'm going to make you fisher of men. And uh, so it says they left, immediately left the boat then with their father, J James and John, and Peter and Andrew left their nets and followed him. So they're just leaving everything and uh, following Jesus. But the time that the third time not mentioned here in Matthew is actually in Luke chapter 5 if you want to find Luke 5 1 we'll give you some exercise in finding scriptures tonight so Jesus is teaching in Capernaum 
And it says, so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats. Now the fishermen that owned the boats were washing the nets. They are still in their enterprise of fishing. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's. And he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But uh, Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. So Peter's saying, you know, I know what I'm doing here. I'm a fisher guy. And we've fished all night. They're not biting, you know. You ever been fishing and they're just, they, I was out salmon fishing and like for two hours we were catching salmon and then for the next four hours it's like, where'd they go? Are they full? But, <laughs> but uh, Peter was out all night and a lot of times they would fish really late at night or early, early in the morning uh, before the heat of the day when the fish were there. So he said, nevertheless, at your word, I'll do what you ask me to. And uh, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners, that's uh, James and John, in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man, O Lord. That, that was kind of a breaking moment for Peter. He's going to have more breaking moments, as we all do as we follow the Lord. We tend to be full of ourselves from time to time, maybe most of the time, maybe too much of the time. And the Lord has to step in and just kind of like, you know, break us a little. So... <laughs> We are humbled. Peter said, you know, we fished all night. We caught nothing. But, you know, if you say so, we'll do this. And then all the fish, the boats were sinking because of all the fish. And Peter said, okay, I've never seen this before. It's, 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 it's the Lord. And, and so he just fell down at Jesus' knees and said, let, let me alone. You don't know me really. <laughs> you don't know that I'm not the guy you want to call. You don't know how, you know, I'm a fisherman, I'm a rough guy, probably got a foul mouth a little bit. You know, we know that from when he denied Jesus and cursed later on, going, reverting, you know. But, uh, and so he's just telling Jesus, something else you don't know. You didn't know how to fish, but we're, we're past that. Now you just don't know who I am, you know. You don't know much about me. You, you don't know I'm a sinful man. And Jesus said, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And so, that was the calling away, actually, of Peter from his vocation of fishing. He was now to be a, a minister. He was now to catch men. He was now to go with Jesus, not just being a follower of Jesus, but to actually go with him and be a disciple. That breaking moment where he said, said, you know, okay, Lord, whatever you want, I'm yours. And we need to come to that moment in our walk with Jesus in our time. As a Christian, I mean, we, we're like Peter and James and John and Andrew. They're, we're all introduced to Jesus. We have our baptism, so to speak, of repentance. We repent and come to the Lord, and we begin to follow Jesus, but, you know, not real closely but we may start attending church and, you know, getting in fellowship, which we should as new Christians. But then there's a later time, I think, as we learn the Word of God and have more in-depth in fellowship with uh, Jesus, we, we begin to have that love of God, you know, in our hearts, you know, put there by the Holy Spirit, the love of Christ. And, and, and we... We want to more respond to that love. And so we draw closer in maybe fellowship and, and seeing where, what we can do, you know, 
maybe we'll start, you know, talking to people at work about, you know, our experience, you know, because this is so real to us now. I've been there, done that. And it's good that everybody at your workplace knows where you are because you've told them already, you know, and they know. And it's interesting. I was in a meeting with the vice president and some other people, and there's a guy that I work with. He's a nice guy. He's Catholic, and he's always coming up with Catholic stories and stuff. And he had, I don't know, he had something to say that was religious. And the vice president looked at him and said, you know, if I need any you know, instruction in the Bible or religion, I'm going to ask less. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, not to disparage that guy, but that was, okay, he knows where I'm at. You know, that's good. But uh, we come to that point in our, you know, following Jesus, and we're there, and a lot of people are good to stay there. That's, they're, they're moving along in their, in their walk. They're, they're going, but then there's, there's that third level. There's that next place that, you know, maybe Jesus needs us to come away from what we're doing, come away, maybe calling us out of our vocation into ministry, and he, and we come to that moment where Jesus confronts us, you know, somehow, and, you know, in our personal experience with him, and, and we're broken by it, and, and he says, you need to start catching men now. Follow me. Don't be afraid. It's time to Time to depart, time to move on from, from this. And that's a special call. It's a special time. And you're, you know, your desire is to be that disciple, to be to whatever the Lord asks. That's what you do no matter what, even though it's a little scary. I remember asking the Lord if, to make me a teacher once upon a time. I, because I, you know, sat at the feet of Chuck Smith, you know, in Calvary, and I, I just loved his teaching, couldn't get enough of his teaching. And one day I was I th on, driving on my way to work, and I said, Lord, just make me a teacher like Chuck. That is so cool. I want to be a teacher. And I kind of moved on from that prayer, but that was just that, that moment, my desire in my heart. And uh, at my job, they, they needed a technical training instructor. I was working in engineering they needed somebody to teach classes on programming and maintenance and things about the machinery, the equipment that they made. And I thought, at the time, I thought that would, I had another job going on on the side, and I thought that would, I wouldn't be so busy as I was in engineering. I could just, you know, chill out and be that instructor. And so whatever I was thinking, I, I put in my request for transfer to, to, that, to, to that job if they'd take me. And at that point, I said, like I said, I was working in another job. I was taking off Friday night, flying to Tulsa, Oklahoma at that time from Southern California, and uh, wiring in a servo system on machines for Rockwell there, Tulsa, and then coming back Sunday night to make, make it back to my real job on Monday morning. <laughs> I did that for a while, but the, that's totally the leading of the Lord, too. But um, coming back on that airplane, I was thinking, I asked them to make me a teacher. You know, I said, I put in front, and I thought, what am I thinking? I cannot teach. <laughs> what? How stupid of me. As soon as I get back Monday morning, I'm going to say, just kidding. I don't, <laughs> I don't want that job. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me at that moment on the plane. He said, no, just let it, let it go. Leave it like it is. And, and it's like I was afraid. And the Lord was saying, don't be afraid. And so I got back Monday morning, and guess what? Yes, I got a job as a technical training instructor. And by the Lord's grace, I did well at it. And then he started letting me teach his word after that. He wasn't going to give me his word right away, not until we trained this guy a little bit. But, but uh, that was just my experience where, you know, the Lord just calling me to something new. It was in my heart to do something like that for the Lord. I wanted, to, he just probably put that desire in my heart to be a teacher. And I said, make me a teacher. And then when it came to the point to be a teacher, I was afraid to be a teacher. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Peter's probably there too. He's got the call, you know. Jesus is calling him to be a disciple, to follow him. And, uh, you know, interesting chain of circumstances. Jesus wants to go out in the boat and go fishing with him. 
And uh, then the massive catch of fish, and Peter just realizes, okay, I'm, I'm undone. You know, I'm undone. Lord, depart from me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wicked man. And, and he said, no, don't be afraid, Peter. From now on, you're going to catch men. And so they, then they brought their boats to the land, and they first took all and followed him for the last time, except for after his death and resurrection. They decided to go fishing again, but that's a story for another day. So, But back in uh, Matthew, how am I doing? I don't want to. back to my Bible. So they left all. They immediately left their nets and followed him. And Jesus, in verse 23 in chapter 4 of Matthew, went all about Galilee, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease from among the people. Then his fame went throughout all of Syria and they brought him to all to him all the sick people who were Syria, that would be the area of the Golan and up there, brought him all the sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were de demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. That's about a 100-mile range. People were coming. They've heard about Jesus. His fame grew, and that's uh, quite a ministry when he's healing all of these things. You know, we... We get um, paralyzed when somebody wants prayer for a healing, you know, something simple. He was healing, you know, paralytics. He was healing, you know, epileptic people. He was demon casting out demons, and that was, you know. Now, there are those who make merchandise of the church by putting on a road show, let's call it, and they claim special healing powers. And they get somehow they get on TV, and uh, a lot of these are made up miracles for the sake of uh, fleecing the flock, and they get fame, which is not the the point of having any spiritual gift of healing. It's for the benefit of the church, not for your fame or to, not to enrich you. If you happen to have the gift of miracles, I don't know anyone who really does. But it's there in chapter 12 of First Corinthians. There are the gifts of healing. I don't know anybody who really has that gift. You know, I've seen God heal people, but having one person that just seemed to be that vessel that God used to heal a lot. And that can make you famous. It's where it gets around and how you handle the fame. That's probably why nobody that I know of anywhere has that truly has that gift because of the the... How do you handle that fame? How do you give, do your works in such a way that men seeing your good works will give glory to God and not you, you know? And so that, that would be difficult for whoever had that. But Jesus did it, and, you know, they, they did give glory to God by Jesus' miracles, seeing him do it. And so from a, about a 100-mile radius, people were coming to see him. And I would go 100 miles for sure, Myself, I think, to see if Messiah had come, the one they've been looking for, was, is this the one? Is he healing them? Especially if I had somebody that was dear to me that I wanted him to heal. I would want to bring them, which I'm sure many people did. They brought to him all the sick people. And so... Next time we'll get into the Sermon on the Mount where he seated his disciples with his disciples and taught them. But, uh, you know, for tonight, I think that's close enough. But just talking about uh, what it is to be called of Jesus, you know, what, are, what, what, step, what, what step are we in that process of the calling of Jesus? Are we just brand new and, and just getting to know him, the baptism of repentance you know and and knowing that he is the savior have we moved on from there have we gone on to maybe desiring to do something of give of ourselves back to him you know 
I don't think there's a, a special calling that I'm just waiting for the Lord to call me to something. You know, just do something. Just draw closer to him. What can you do to the person next to you? Can you pray for them? You know, is there something? going on in the neighborhood you can do and express the love of Christ you know there's you know don't just uh, be idle when there's things that maybe he's putting before you like in Ephesians chapter 4 verse is it 8 that he says God God's pre predestined us to walk in good works that he's prepared beforehand that we should walk in them and uh, so God set us up for good works already. We just have to, when the opportunity presents itself, do it. God set us up. We don't have to go, you know, making up good works. Just stay close to Jesus and you'll find that he set you up for some good works. And don't, don't uh, do good to those whom you can do when they're in need, when you have the opportunity. And then there's that, you know, further call where does he want to make you a teacher? Does he want to make you, you know, an evangelist? Does he have that gifting for you? Does he want that? Is that desire in your heart to draw closer to you? Is he calling you away from your profession? Or is he calling you to do something else with your profession? That was my my problem. I, or the way my life worked, I, I never stopped. <laughs> doing what I did but he gave me the opportunity to teach first at work and then in his church you know and then pastoring a church and so and still working <laughs> at the you're still fishing but <laughs> paying the bills and and that's like my wife said we like small churches well that's trouble with a small church they're not going to pay the pastor very much anyway <laughs> so the pastor has to work but that's just God's will that's the way he does things and he did it in my life. He's still doing it, and I appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I want to move on with the Lord, whatever he wants. I told the Lord in the beginning, I just won't tell you no. I'll never say no to you. And he's kept me to that word. When I th rethought that statement <laughs> a few times, and I actually have said no, but then, all right, I said, said I wouldn't say no and come back to it. It's because, you know, it, it's not always easy to follow Jesus, but it's always the best. It's always the most blessed path, even though it may be the hardest path. Like one person said, any dead fish can float downstream. But, you know, you want to swim, you're going to go up against the stream. Yeah. And so don't be afraid of the calling like Peter. Just like Jesus Christ, calm those fears and move on in your life and whatever he does put you put before you to do do it with all your might any questions now you guys ever have that experience of Jesus calling you to do anything <laughs> yeah one person Jesus talks to anyway <laughs> that happens yeah Yeah, yeah, that's okay. You know, if he says no, your heart's there. And, you know, I, you know, how can they go unless someone send them, you know? And we can be senders if we're not, you know, the missionaries. We can be senders of the missionaries. I, I'm, a, I'm a reluctant missionary myself. <laughs> My other thing that Jesus called me to do, <laughs> you know, and, but um, I don't want it to be all about me tonight. We'll move on. <laughs> so, but, um, yeah, just God can tell, tell you no, but when he says move, move. When he says follow me, follow him. Don't, don't say, well, you know, I've got my family, you know, and we got it right. God, my family, and my job, and, you know, and no. That there's no totem pole with God. It's all this way. There's God, and then there's all these things in your life. And he wants to take care of and take over all of these areas of your life. He loves your family more than you do. He'll take care of them. And so you just have to trust him and 
believe him and follow him. It's the best thing to do. Okay, well, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, so many things, showing us the truth about Jesus Christ, who he is. And Lord, I just pray that we experience you in a deeper way this week as we seek you, Lord, and that we have an ear to hear what your spirit has to say, Lord, that we might be uh, aware of your calling, whether it's to remain where we are, whether it's to go someplace else, to do something else, to remain in the vocation we have. We'll, Father, we just want to know, hear that voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. And so, Lord, we ask for this. And thank you for our time in Jesus' name. Amen.